Hello there, welcome to another video about building parsers using Nearly.js. So uh, at this point, we're going to continue from last time in which we uh, made this parenthesis syntax work for um, this calculator we've been working on. So at this point, our calculator is able to <clears throat> take some calculation based on at subtract, multiply, or divide, um, and uh, give you the, calculate the answer for you. And it can, uh, this syntax can support uh, parentheses now. So this should first do this calculation, this calculation, and then the total calculation combined. Let's see if it works. 0.666 repeating, so this is, should be six, four divided by six. That's right, 0.666 repeating, that's two over three. So that, that seems correct. So now in this episode, we're gonna add the ability to have uh, built-in functions such as uh, square root, square power. I don't remember if we did power uh, sign. And the syntax is gonna be like this. So it's gonna be something like uh, square root of uh, a four should get us two, for example. I think we're also doing power. So if we do pow like this, the answer should be four. So this syntax involves a short name for the function. So that's the function name. Uh, a left paren and a right paren. My writing is horrible, uh, and then some some uh, some normal expression in the inside of as the argument of the function, and that would just be whatever at, up at this point whatever expression this calculator can handle, and the whole thing is yet another expression which can again be compounded with uh, some other symbols to create a even more complicated expression. So let's see how we did this. Uh, White Kid wrote this code and I'm gonna replay what he did and I explain his train of thought <clears throat> as we go. Okay, so so the way we're gonna do it is uh, we, we, we created this thing in the last episode called unary expression, which is like, it's a one unary meaning one, whereas binary meaning two. So an unary expression is basically a thing that only has one thing in it. And we said that that was any expression that's surrounded by parentheses, or it could be a number. We're gonna add one more thing to it now, which gonna be, is gonna be the result of executing a function. We'll call that the function and then define it. So what is a function? A function is a function name, first a function name, He's actually going to call it built-in function. Okay, function name, and then an op a right parameter, or I should say left parameter, and then an additive, which is like some expression, <clears throat> and then an, a right paren. That makes sense. And what is a built-in function? Let's have some building. We're, we're going to have square, square root, sine, cosine, absolute value. We didn't even add power here. Oops. I think he forgot to add power. <laughs> we might have to rectify that later. But okay, so how are we gonna do the calculation here? Well, depending on which built-in function it is, we're gonna have to do a different thing. That's why we're gonna use a switch statement. Uh, we're gonna pick, so this is, fn is the name of the function, which was picked out of this array of matches here. And if you remember, this array of matches is like this and I'll write the indices for you here. The fir first one is zero, second one is one, etc. Oh, again, my handwriting is horrible. So data at zero, that's that the built-in function name. They'll give you the function name because that came from over here. Oh, we need some IDs here to unpack this one. I think he'll have to do that pretty soon. Um, and then the value is gonna come from index three this one. 
So the additive is going to come in here, and that will get us the value because our additive symbol already will calculate the number for us at this point. Okay, and then so that depending on what the function name is, uh, if it's a square, then we're just going to multiply the value by itself. If it's a square root, we're going to use JavaScript's math dot square root function. Uh, Okay, he's testing the square root function out in, in Node.js. Make sure that exists. Uh, and in JavaScript, there's also a sine function, cosine function, and absolute function. And again, he forgot about the power. Uh, okay, so we're going to run the parser again. And then let's see if it handles the square root function now. No, why is that? Probably because he forgot these IDs. Um, okay, so putting them back in now makes it work. And if you don't know what these IDs uh, stand for, I'll go back to our, I believe, the second second uh, video in this series about using nearly JS, and we'll have an explanation about why this ID transformer function is needed. And yeah, at this point. We're able to um, we're able to call these functions. Um, that seems pretty cool. Let's do absolute value. So like if I do two minus four, abs terminal here. Uh, so absolute value of two minus four is two. Two times the square root of ten is twenty. The square root of sixteen. 2 times the square root of 16 is 4, 4 times 2. Okay, so we've got these functions working now, and they... All right, let's go off script here and make powers work. So in order for powers to work here, uh, we actually need to be able to support multiple arguments. So we need a thing called an argument list, and then use the recursive trick to have multiple arguments. So... First of all, let's call this guy argument list, and then define what that is. <clears throat> okay, so an argument list can either be just one argument, or it can just be an argument and then followed by yet another argument list, which allows us it to recurse. Uh, what's an argument? We'll start with additive, right? We'll start with our additive. So it's an additive, some optional white space. Uh, a comma, some more optional white space, and then another argument list. Or it could simply be one additive and let that be it. Um, yeah, let's go with that. Uh, there's a possibility of allowing empty argument lists, but I'm actually not going to, that would be for something like generating a random number or something. I'm actually going to not allow that for now. And if you do want to allow it, I'll, I'll, I'll give that to you, the viewer, as a homework homework assignment. Okay, so, um, oh, actually this is not going to work because we want to represent an argument list as an array. So we want to take this additive here, take the data from it, and return an array that takes the zeroth element or the first element of this match. And for this one, where the, I know the argument list is going to get return me an array, probably from this one, I'm going to also return an array. So data is going to return an array, which has data zero in it. So zero is that one. And then what's this one? Well, zero, one, two, three, four. This is four. I'm um, notice data at 4 is going to be give me an array because here I'm returning an array and the other one also returns me an array. So I'm going to spread it into this array. So now this argument list is going to be uh, could have multiple things in it. Uh, so data at 3 is going to be the arguments. I'll call it arcs could be more than one value, but uh, in these cases, they're not going to be more than one value. So I'm actually going to say 
first arc is arc zero, and second arc is arc one, and then change these value references to first arc, and then for power. I'll do math at pow, pass in first arc and then second arc. Okay, so now that's done, I can regenerate the parser. Uh, gen bn run gen parser. And then let's try power. Pow two to the third. Uh oh, that does not work. Oh, I know why. Because I forgot to. Um... No, I don't know why. Let's read the error message. <laughs> Unexpected P. Instead of, instead I was expecting to see one of the following. Oh, I didn't add pow to the list of built-in functions. That is why. Okay. Fixing that. I'm gonna and the parser one more time and now it works we can do powers now 2 to the 4th is 16 2 to the 5th is what is 2 to the 12th 4096 awesome um, now you know your binary numbers um, and uh, that's I think that's a good place to stop for this episode and I uh, hope to see you next time for some more parser uh, in some parser information, some information about parsers. Uh, next episode, we'll probably get in more into AST, abstract syntax trees. Uh, so if you're interested in that, I will see you next time.